after that we have a log file viewer a uh, basic uh, error prone thing uh, this catches all the errors on your computer from different logs and different things uh, basically a regular user will not need to use this for anything but when it comes to troubleshooting a hardware software and all a bunch of things this definitely definitely comes into play for debugging uh, there's nothing much to explain here other than this is used for professionals that know what they're doing in there you can't really damage anything with that program next we have the login screen um, this is it. It used to be very big. It has the ability to change themes and change so many things on it. But now we have three options. So we can unlock it. We put in the password to unlock it. We can uh, show the screen for choosing. Or we can log in automatically as some user. Or uh, And we can allow uh, 30 seconds for anyone else to log in first. I'm going to keep it as this and just go ahead and close it. It is very pathetic. Um, hoping that 10.04, the next release of Ubuntu, will actually have a more customizable menu. But for now, I'm really disappointed in that menu. After the login, we have network tools. Uh, and basic tool set for any uh, networking junkie out there. You don't need you know external applications like you would in uh, Windows. Basically, uh, you can check your devices. You have hardware addresses, multicast, and so on. A bunch of information about your device. You have IPv4, IPv6. What can we do? We can ping. We can netstat. We can trace route. We can port scan, lookup, finger, and who is. Now, if these uh, commands don't sound familiar to you, you most definitely won't need these. But this is definitely a really good uh, Swiss Army knife-like application for networking very useful for troubleshooting network uh, problems or just messing around and trying to you know mess with people's computers but let's not use that for that anyway that's basically what's this used for uh, you more than likely won't be using it and that's all it does it's just a network tool after that we have printing another menu for printing seems like this is the third one but here we can uh, actually do a more default or more customizable advanced settings manager in a sense. Of course you can still set as default for the uh, different computers right here by this option. Or we can right click and then go to properties. And here we can name the printer, we can do the location of the printer, the device URI which is my HP USB. We can do uh, policies we can do access control who can use a printer and who can't very easy to use put in some user's name and then add and now he can't use the printer and then you can just delete him uh, we have printer options like uh, what would you like to use for default to have letters executives uh, CDs or DVDs this is just basically the layout for your paper or print you can do normal color cartridge grayscale this is all defaults so when you change it in here it will change or ev it'll be put out every time you try to print so even when you don't want to print uh, in color or you do want to print in color it'll print in grayscale if you have it on grayscale there's an easy way to do it through, through the print application when you're actually printing to actually do little tweaks like that uh, next we have jobs type number of copies to make by default and ink toner and so on Oh wait, let me show you that. <clears throat> the information on that last tab. When you have your printer connected, it'll and you do refresh, it'll talk with the printer and it'll tell you how much ink you have left or if you need anything, if there's a jam and so on and so forth. It's a really really useful little uh device here. And that's it for the printers. Next we have software sources. This is basically how uh all your applications are updated and installed on your computer you most likely won't have to mess around in here uh, but if you do have to ha want to install applications that are not available in the uh, default Ubuntu software center you can actually look them up through here right now I have a bunch of different other software which these are all the websites that I'm downloading applications from and updating applications the ones you will find familiar are these two as you will have them as well uh, other ones here are basically applications for uh, my desktop customizations and that's just stuff I'm experimenting with. But the biggest thing is how do you add a website? Most of the time you just press add 
and you're able to add a line. Uh, it looks something like this. First is Deb, then it's the website, and then it's main. Now you can't make this up, you have to actually find a legit um, website with this format and it tells you how to actually do it. Uh, it'll just say copy this into the sources, um, software sources in your computer and that's this is where you would actually copy it Then you do add source and when you close it'll tell you to revert or refresh your um, computer or your software list. Next we have the updates and here we can actually set up a few things about updates. We can do pre-released updates, unsupported updates. If you're using this computer for a uh, very good or a stable computer, you don't want to mess around with any unstable stuff, I would definitely just leave it as it is. But if you want to experiment and you want to help out with the system, you can definitely go with the next ones. Uh, we can do a check for the updates. We can do daily, every two days, weekly, every two weeks. Now, you can't disable up. Well, you can disable it. But I would not recommend disabling it because this that is definitely a very big uh, security risk. What's that doing there? We can do sec install security updates, doc confirmation, download all updates in the background, and only notify about available updates. So it's kind of like, do you want to automatically install everything, or do you want to be told what to install? And release upgrades. Now Ubuntu has different distributions that come out every six months. There are um, normal releases, which come out every six months, and then there's long-term supports, uh, which come every two years. Now the next one that's coming out is 10.04 and it's coming like basically 2010 <coughs> next month which will be April and in this sense you you can update it to that one release and then ignore all other normal releases now normal releases are decent um, for a regular computer I would definitely stick with long terms but for a person that uses a computer on and off and I mean it's pretty good with using computers decent um, I would definitely recommend normal because new features are always available in normal normal releases while the long term are the basics of where it's stopped at and that's where it's going to stop. I'm going to just do normal. Authentication, these are uh, PPA keys for online websites and you can do submit statistical information. This basically keeps track of what application you use on a weekly basis and helps Ubuntu uh, find the best applications in the Linux world and kind of promote them to other users. And that's it for the software sources, that was probably the longest one of all. So now the package manager is next. This works just like the Ubuntu Software Center, except it's a little bit more advanced. Um, while the Ubuntu Software Center gives you full-on applications, like the, a very brief idea of what the application is, this gives you small packages that you can install to improve your system. Anything from Microsoft libraries or uh, Wine libraries that are the, they're kind of made after the Microsoft libraries to kind of run Microsoft applications on Ubuntu. Anything from that, so the actual applications, but notice when I click on the 3D chess, I click over here in the corner, or in the very end where the little star is, I click there and then mark for installation. That's the first step. The next step is going to tell me I have to install other stuff with this, which is this application here, and sometimes it would be a long list of them, but most of the time you can just mark now I have two applications to install. Next I would click apply and then it's going to tell me apply the following changes. I just say apply. You can also just download the packages if you don't want them installed. But you, you just click apply and it will download the application and install it. And now I have DDHS installed on my computer in a very short time. Ooh, yeah. Anyway that's basically how you would install an application. It's not that hard, um, but it's a lot easier to use the Ubuntu Software Center because it's a lot more organized for uh, typical users, not advanced users. This is more of an advanced user program. Next, we'll have uh, while this loads or installs. Let me just minimize it. What am I doing? Minimize. There you go. All right. 